Yeah, so the, yeah, those kinds me... of conspiracy theories are interesting. I mean, there's other ones for me personally that touched uh, sort of the institution that means a lot to me is the MIT and uh, you know Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah, I want to hear a lot more. I want to hear about that. I, I talk about Epstein a lot, so I'm like, oh, you do? Yeah, okay. and and he. I was gonna say in terms of conspiracy theory, that one changed my outlook because I was like, I was like, whoa, like you have this dude who convinced some of the most successful people on earth that he was like some money manager. And it looks like it was totally fake. Like Leon Black. I mean, this is one of the richest men on Wall Street, $9 billion net worth. Why is he giving him over a hundred million dollars between 2015 and 2019? Yeah. What's going on here? Lex Wexner, same thing. So yeah, I want to hear because you know people who met him. And the only yeah. person I know who met him was Eric Weinstein. I've, I've yeah. heard his, right. Oh boy. So <laughs> I, listen, I'm still in, and Eric is fascinating and like Eric is full on saying that. Uh, right. He was a Mossad or whatever. Yeah, there's a, there's a front fake. for something, uh, something much, much, much bigger. Um, and there's, uh, whatever his name, Robert Maxwell, all the, mm -hmm. all those stories, it, it, like you could dig deeper and deeper that Jeffrey's just like the tip of the iceberg. I just think he's an exceptionally charismatic, listen, this isn't speaking from confidence or mm -hmm. like deep understanding of the situation, but from my speaking with people, he just seems like, at least from the side of his influence and interaction with researchers, he just seems like somebody that was exceptionally charismatic uh, and actually took interest. He was unable to speak about interesting scientific things, but he took interest in them. Hmm. So he knew how to stroke the egos of a lot of powerful people, like well, like in, in different kinds of ways. I suppose, I don't know about this because I don't have, like if a really, okay, this is, this is weird to say, but, hmm. I have an ability, okay, I think women are beautiful, I like women, but like if if like a supermodel came to me or something, like like I am able to reason. It seems like some people yes. are not able to think clearly when there's like an attractive woman in the room. Mm -hmm. And I think that was one of the tools he used to manipulate people. Interesting. I don't know, listen, it's like the pedophile thing. Like right. I, I don't know how many people are complete sex addicts, but like it seems like, like looking out into the world, like there's a well, like the Me Too movement have revealed that there's a lot of like weird, yeah, like uh, creepy people out there. I don't know, but I think it was just one of the many tools that he used uh, to uh, convince people and manipulate people, but not in some like um, evil way but more just really good at the art of conversation yeah. and just winning people over on the side. And then by building through that process, building a network of other really powerful people and not explicitly, but implicitly having done shady shit with powerful people, yeah, like building up a kind of implied power of like, like, we did some shady shit together. So we're not like, you're gonna help me out on this extra thing I need to right. do now. And that builds and builds and builds to where you're able to actually control, like have quite a lot of power without explicitly having like a strategy meeting. And I think a single person or, yeah, I think a single person can do that, or can start that ball rolling. And over time it becomes a group thing. Like, I don't know if, uh, Jillian Maxwell was involved or others. And oh, yeah, over time, that becomes almost like a really powerful organization that wasn't, that's not a front for something much deeper and bigger, but it's almost like, maybe it's because I love cellular automata, man. <laughs> a system that starts out as a simple thing with simple rules can create incredible complexity. Yes, And so I just think that, uh, we're now looking in retrospect, it looks like an incredibly complex system that's operating in, but like, that's just because it's, you know, there could have been a lot of other Jeffrey Epstein's in, in my perspective that the simple thing just uh, was successful early on and builds and builds and builds and builds. And then there's uh, creepy shit that like a lot of aspects of the system helped it get bigger and bigger and more powerful and so on. So the final result is, I mean, 
listen, I'm, I have a pretty optimistic, I have a, I tend to see the good in people. And so it's been heartbreaking to me in general, just to see, you know, people I look up to not have the level of integrity I thought they would, or like the strength of character, mm -hmm. all those kinds of things. And it seems like you should be able to, to see the bullshit that is Jeffrey Epstein, like when you meet him. Right. Uh, we're not talking about like Eric Weinstein, like one or two or three or five interactions, but like there's people that had like, <laughs> like years of relationship with him. Yeah. And I don't know, I, I'm not sure. Even what, after he was convicted. After that, he that's was convicted. The thing that guy always gets. Yeah, there's there's stories. I mean, I don't need to sort of, uh, I honestly believe, <sighs> okay, here's the open question I have. I don't know how many creepy sexual people there are out there. Like, I don't know if there is like, like the people I know, the faculty and so on, mm -hmm. I don't know if they have like a kink that I'm just not aware of that was being leveraged. Because to me, it seems like if 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 people aren't, if not everybody's a pedophile, <laughs> <laughs> then it's just the art of conversation. That is just like the art of just like manipulating people by making them feel good about like the exciting stuff they're doing. Listen, man, academics are, pe people talk about money. I don't think academics care about money as much as people think. What they care about is like somebody, they, they, they want to be, uh, it's the same thing that Instagram models posting their butt pictures, is they want to be loved. They yeah. want attention. My and, parents are professors. Yeah, yeah. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, and uh, Jeffrey Epstein, like the money is another way to show attention. Right, it's a proxy. So, it's it my work matters and 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 he for some of he did that for some of the weirdest most brilliant people i don't want to sort of drop names but everybody knows them it's like people that are the most interesting academics is the one he cared about yeah like people are thinking about the most difficult questions of in all of science and all of engineering so those people are were kind of outcasts in academia a little bit because they're doing the weird shit. They were the weirdos. <laughs> and he cared about the weirdos and he gave them money. And that, uh, you know, I, that's, I don't know if there's something more nefarious than that. Uh, I I hope not, but maybe I'm surprised. And in fact, uh, half the population of the world is pedophiles. No, I, I think it's what you were talking about, which is that it's the... It's the implication after the initial, right? Like the, you do some shady things together or you do something that you want out of the public eye and you're a public person. And look, we probably even experience this to a limited extent, right? You're like, ah, you know, like, I don't want to, I don't know. I almost lost my temper, you know, one time whenever a car hit me and I'm like, I can't freak out in public anymore. Like yeah. that, you know, like what if somebody takes a photo or something? Yeah. And so I think that there's an extent to that times a billion literally when you have a billion dollars or more and you take that all together and you stack it up on itself i saw a story about like bill clinton like bill clinton was with epstein or with galaine maxwell in a private air terminal or something and she had one of their like sex you know one of those girls who was underage had her dressed up in a literal like pilot uniform and she was underage in order to you know and she was dis being disguised for being older and she was a masseuse, right? Because that was one of the uh, guises which they got in order to sexually traffic these women. And she was like, Bill was like complaining about his neck. And she's like, give Bill Clinton a, ma a massage, right? So now there's a photo of an underage girl giving a massage to the former president of the United States. I don't think he knew, right? But like, that looks bad. And so I, th this is kind of what we're getting at, which is that you're setting it all up and creating those preconditions. Or like Prince Andrew. Do I think Prince Andrew knew that Virginia Gouffre was underage i don't know probably knew she was pretty young which i think is you know skeevy enough where yeah. you're a fucking prince you should probably know better yeah but i don't think he knew she was underage or maybe he did and if he did then he's even more of a piece of shit than i thought but if we when we when we look at these things the the stuff i'm more interested in is like what you were talking about i'm like bill gates how do you get the richest man of the world in your house yeah like under what guy? And Gates is like, he was talking about financing and all this. I'm like, you don't have access to money or bankers? Like, you're the richest man in the world. Like, yeah. you can call Goldman Sachs anytime you want on a hotline. Like, why do you need? That's where I, that's where I start again to get more conspiratorial because I'm like, Bill, dude, 
you can you have the gold credit, right? <laughs> like you don't need Epstein to create some complicated financing structure. Or Leon Black, like what, what is 2015, 2009? I mean, this is very recent stuff. Or, and this is the part that really got me is I read the department, of, I think it's called the Department of Financial Services report around Deutsche Bank with Epstein. They knew he was a criminal. They solicited his business, explicitly knew that his business meant access to other high net worth individuals, Just consistently doled money out from his account for hush payments to women in Europe and prostitution rings. They knew all of this within the bank. It was elevated multiple times. Here was the other one. One of Epstein's associates was like, hey, how much money can we take out before we hit the you know, automatic sensor before you have to tell the IRS? And that question by, by their own standards is supposed to result in a notification to the feds and they never did it. And he was withdrawing like $2 million of cash in five years for tips. Yeah. To, I'm like, okay. I'm like something's going on here. Yeah. Like, yeah, you see what I'm saying? There's a lot of signs yeah, like, that make you think that there's a bigger thing at play than just the man. That there is some, it does look like a larger organization is using this front. Right. It's again, I don't know. I, I truly don't know. And I'm not willing to use the certainty, which I think a lot of people online are to say like it wants 100%. Yeah, the, the certainty you know? is always the problem. The, that That's probably why I hesitate to touch conspiracy theories is because I'm allergic to certainty in yes. all forms, in politics, any kind of discourse. And people are so sure it, in both directions, actually. It's, it's kind of hilarious. Uh, either they're sure that the conspiracy theory, a particular whatever the conspiracy theory is, is false. Like they almost dismiss it like, uh, like they, they don't even want to talk about it. It's like the people, like the way they dismiss that the earth is flat. Yes. Most scientists are like, they don't even want to like hear what the, what the flat earthers are saying. <laughs> they don't have a, like zero patience for it, which is like, Maybe in that case, yeah, is deserved. But everything else, you really like have empathy. Like consider the fact you have. Okay, this is weird to say, but I feel like you have to consider that the Earth might be flat for like one minute. Like well, you have to be empathetic. You have to be open minded. I don't see a lot of that through our cultural tastemakers and more. And that's that really is what concerns me the most because it's just another manifestation of all of our problems is that we have this completely bifurcating economy bifurcating culture literally in terms of we have the middle of the country and then we have the coast and in terms of the population it's almost 50 50 and with you know increasing mega cities and urban culture like urban monoculture of la new york and chicago and dc and boston and austin relative to how an entire other group of americans live their lives or even the people within them who aren't rich and upwardly mobile how they live their lives is just completely separating and all of our language and communication in mass media and more is to the top and then everybody else is forgotten